Welcome back to my channel. In a little over a month, I am going to be competing in the WeatherTech International Challenge. This is one of the largest vintage races in the United States and featured this year is the Kastner Cup, which is a race dedicated to Kaz Kastner, who was the head of the competition department for Triumph here in the United States. So I will be competing in that race in my Triumph TR4 back here. I haven't raced this car in a few years. In fact, I haven't even driven it probably in a few years. Last that I remember, I drove this car on a road rally. It was raining, cold and wet, and it looks like I haven't even washed the car from that event. Yesterday, I did plug the battery charger in to charge up the battery on this car. I haven't tried to start it yet, but I do need to move a few cars before I can get it out. So today I'd like to dig the car out, go through it, see if it runs, see what I need to order, and start preparing the car for the race. Let's turn the power and then the fuel pump on. Just make sure that this isn't leaking any fuel before I try to start it. Fuel pump's running. You can hear the fuel coming up. Our fuel pressure just went up. Everything looks good. I think I can try to start it. The starter just clicked, so the battery is completely shot. Even though I've had it on the charger, it won't start the engine. I have a jump pack on it now, so if it starts, I'm just gonna drive it out of here, get it away from these other cars, where there's plenty of room to take a look at it. I guess I know where I'm starting this project then. The car does run and drive, but I need to replace the battery and it's hidden back there behind the passenger seat. It's not very easy to access it. I have to crawl in here around the jungle gym. There's a strap that holds this cover on. There's Optima battery. You've heard me say this a hundred times. I dislike batteries. I like to use ultra capacitors where I can. I can't decide if I want to put an ultra cap or a battery back in this car. The ultra cap would have the benefit that I'm not going to ruin it. You don't drive a race car all the time, so it is stored for long periods where the battery could drain and get ruined. But during a race, if the alternator were to quit, I might not have enough battery power to make it through the race. Whereas if I was running a battery, it's likely that if I turned off the electric fan and other things that I would be able to finish the race just on battery power alone. So I'll think about that for a little bit while I get this out. Well, that's nice. It looks like the battery cannot come off without removing this bar or taking the top off the car. This is just another sign that this battery has been in here for a long, long time because I don't remember ever having to deal with this before. And I'm not sure if it's easier to take the top off or to try to slide some of this roll bar out of the way. Turned out by taking the bolt out of this roll bar piece right here, I was able to squeeze the battery through here. I just happen to have the exact same battery sitting here. I bought it for another project that I ended up not using it in. So I guess I'll throw the new one in and not convert it to a capacitor at this time. But I do have an idea to try to get the longest life out of this battery. The new battery is installed and I don't want it to go bad. So next I'm going to install this connector that has a typical battery charger connector. That way I can easily make sure to keep the battery charged 
and hopefully not ruin it. I can also charge it up in between races if I want to. And it's just a little more added security that I'll be able to finish the race. Battery charger connection is installed. And the other neat thing about this is I can use this for other things other than just charging the battery. I can put a USB adapter on there. I can put a cigarette outlet adapter on there. And I can even use this to power a camera that I'm going to mount right here. Normally here in the United States, your belts for vintage racing do not expire as long as they look like they are in good shape. But for this event, being an international event, I'm going to update these. These were made in April of 2013. So I've ordered a new set of harnesses and I'm going to get those installed. And speaking of safety equipment, I'm going to be replacing this fire extinguisher with a full fire system. So this will have two nozzles attached to it, one that sprays into the passenger compartment and one that sprays into the engine compartment. You're not supposed to mount this the way that that fire extinguisher is right there because it won't work under hard braking. The preferred way for it to mount would be sideways like this. So I'll either mount it that way or I will mount it the next best way, which is something like this. Not quite sure how I'm going to mount the fire system yet. But before the race, I'll get this installed and I'll show you what I've done. Now that the car runs again, I'm going to run it on the dyno, make sure that everything's okay. I'll compare the dyno results to the last time that I dynoed this car. And if everything looks the same, I know I don't have any serious problems to address. I'll get it warmed up and then let's make a dyno pull. And the results are in almost 118 horsepower, 113 foot pounds of torque. Let's check that against my last run. The last time I dynoed this was in February of 2017. Looks like we're making the same horsepower as we did before, about 10 foot pounds less than we did before, but, but there is going to be a margin of error due to temperature, humidity, other things like that. So I am happy with these results. Everything's looking good. I just need to update all my safety equipment, change my fluids, check on my torques, and the car should be ready to go to the racetrack. So if you are going to be at the Brian Redmond Challenge at Road America, come by and say hi, or at least cheer me on from the stands. I won't have the most powerful Triumph out there, but this car is era correct. I don't have any modern speed equipment on it. I have no chance of winning the race, but I will be enjoying that authentic period triumph racing experience. As always, if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.